Let's take a look at the more linear digitizing tools. Uh, let's take a look at the walk input method, the vector line input method, and the manual stitch. Um, now, I will be talking about how to use these tools and what to use them for. Some of this may be a little bit uh, redundant in that uh, some of the process is the same uh, that we talked about in the digitizing tools video, um, but hopefully a little bit of repetition uh, will help it sink in a little bit. All right, so um, walk uh, input method is the one I'm gonna talk about first. And typically, uh, walk stitches just create a, a single kind of running stitch one after the other, um, typical to just a straight stitch uh, sewing machine. And uh, one of the graphics that I think would be beneficial for uh, you to practice with and to, to help understand this a little bit is located in the designs folder. And inside there is your graphics folder. This is loaded with your software. Um, and let's just go look at lines.bmp. There we go. All right, so this is this is the one that I want to look at. Um, it's got a few helpful uh, other pieces to it, um, but this gives you kind of an idea of the, the types of shapes that you can create. Very thin, linear shapes. Typically, they are um, very useful when used as uh, travel stitches. So uh, going from one point of your design to another without trimming, so that helps with efficiency. Um, you can use it for fine detail work, so smaller um, outlines, or um, you've, I think, probably seen me use it as veins on a leaf or something like that. Um, other things that, that you'll want to um, probably use it for every now and then is um, to manually digitize your own uh, underlay. If there's just this area that you want to tack down or um, kind of get uh, really specific underlay in, you can you can manually digitize your own. Um, occasionally, I will also use them as a basting stitch. So I will go around the outside of the design um, just to kind of tack everything down with a very long stitch length, and then I can uh, rip that out when I'm done. And because it's a long stitch length, it'll pull uh, right out. So kind of useful tools for that, um, or, or this is a useful tool for those purposes. So let's take a look at this and see how to actually use this tool. All right, so I'm going to select the walk normal tool. And uh, it is up here in my input toolbar. It is on uh, the upper right. If this is not what you have showing, you can click and hold for a half a second and uh, access your walk normal. And that's this guy right here. So I'm going to let go. Um, when I have this tool selected, you can see that it's highlighted with blue. Um, when I have this tool selected, I then have the properties available to me above it. Um, for right now, I'm going to use just the basic properties. I'm going to do this in uh, a bright green or bright pink, uh, just so it'll show up a little bit more. And typically, I don't digitize uh, in 3D. Typically, I do it uh, just flat. Um, but as this shows up a little bit better on screen for you guys, I am going to do it in 3D. All right, uh, things to think about uh, with this. What I will probably do, uh, or what I, I plan to do with this design, um, is I will pay attention to where these guys connect, or what is a more efficient path. Um, if you wanna test yourself, you can do that, um, that way. And then the other thing that I will do is on uh, these three, I will change what I'm doing. So the first one will be one thickness of thread thick, the second one will be two thicknesses of thread thick, and the third one will be three. So it will be a walk normal on the top, and then a walk retrace in the middle, which just goes back over itself so it ends where it begins, and then the bottom one will be a walk bean, um, which goes over itself uh, by default three times. You can make it kind of any odd number um, going up from three to, I don't know, something in the teens. We'll look it up in the properties. I never remember because I never go that far. Um, so we'll do that. Um, but in doing that, you kind of need to think about uh, what the direction is. So, so what's going uh, first, what's going second, all that kind of stuff. Um, so 
for here, let's get a different color real quick so we can actually see what we're doing. Let's do this in blue. Um, for this line, we know that we want it to end over here, so it's going to go this direction. And then, because we want it to end over here, so the one before that, we need it to start over here. Um, so it'll start here. Since it's a retrace, it will also exit there. So then this one, we need to exit here, which means we need to go this direction since it's only going once. And this will make sense a little bit more as I do it. Um, so let me clear this off and get back into Design Shop, and then we'll go from there. So this one I want to start here. So I'm going to left click to start. And then I'm going to move across. I'm going to use auto scroll to kind of move that screen along. I'm ho also holding alt. Um, if I didn't hold alt, I could put this line wherever I wanted. Since it's completely straight across, I'm going to hold alt and it will snap to a 15 degree increment. I'm going to click that inputs um, that little triangle. That's a, another straight point. And you'll notice that I only put two, one on each end. Then I'm going to hit enter. So you can see that um, show up. Now, uh, you can change the thickness of this. Um, by default, it's pretty close to the thickness of thread, um, of, a, of a 40 weight thread, but, but you can change that um, if you wanted by uh, right clicking on the 3D button. You can change your thread width. Um, I, I may have this a little bit thicker than a 40 weight. Um, I'm going to make it a lot thicker just so you can see it on screen a little bit better. Yeah, all right, there we go. Um, so it's a little bit thicker for you guys to see. Uh, I would not thicken that up on screen very much because um, I want it to, to mimic a little more closely what I'm actually going to do. I never trust it completely. I, I always sew out because fabric's going to change it. Um, but for you guys, I wanted that to be a little bit thicker. So notice that mine will be different than yours. All right, so uh, let me hit escape to get out of the tool and we'll have this just selected for a minute. You'll notice that I did one point on either end, and where I started has this little green circle. That's the entry point where it exited. exited. There is a red X. Um, that is the end point. That's where it ends. Um, and why didn't I add more points? Um, adding more points doesn't make it any straighter. It just makes it um, harder to edit and a little bit uh, harder to get straight. Um, I will only add a point when I start having transitions in the form. All right, so on this next one, I want it to be two thicknesses. So I want it to go forward and come back over itself. And I could digitize it that way, um, or what I can choose to do is check the retrace button. What that does is it will have it come back and meet over itself, but I only have to digitize one direction. So I'm going to left click here. I'm going to hold Alt to keep that nice and straight. Come all the way over here, left click again. And when I hit enter, you'll notice that that pinwheel is right over here. So on this one, um, I started here, I ended here. On this one, notice that the entry and exit point are exactly the same because I have that retrace on, it will line up all those stitches. And in fact, the needle penetrations will line up exactly. So um, the next one, I want to be three thicknesses. You can even see the, the connection. Um, so I could come down here and digitize another one. Um, or since it's exactly the same, what I could choose to do is copy this one. I'm going to come down here and paste it. And when I pasted it, the X and Y locations remained exactly the same. So I need to drag this down. I'm holding Alt uh, to drag it perfectly uh, vertically. So now I just lined that up. And uh, I'm, I'm ready to go, except, except I wanted to end over here and start over here. So what I can choose to do is flip it. So these guys will allow me to flip it. Now it's flipped. And then I wanted it to be three thicknesses of thread. So I'm going to change my type to bean. And now it is three threads thick. And again, you can change it from anything, uh, any odd number between three and 
13. I knew it was a teen. I couldn't remember what one. It's 13. I I rarely go uh, above three, and if I do, it is really rarely more than five. Um, but that's, uh, again, completely up to you. So um, one, two, and three thicknesses. And um, being super efficient, we ended where we began. If you wanted to trim between those, you could. I'm choosing not to just so you can see the path a little bit. All right, so now let's look at this guy. So this has a curve, and how, how do I manage this curve? Um, I do it with curve points, and that is with a right click. So I'm gonna select the tool. I'm gonna turn off retrace, because I don't want this to retrace. And then I'm going to start here. Now I'm gonna draw on it first. Um, so I'm gonna grab my markup tool, which is a different tool than Design Shop. Um, and typically when I'm dealing with curves, uh, what you'll see me do is try to divide the curve into equal pieces and use as few many, as few many, as few input points as possible. Um, it just makes it easier to edit. Uh, that does not mean that I will make my life so difficult uh, that I get frustrated. If I need to put in a curve point, I will. Um, typically, even on uh, perfect curves, I try not to exceed 180 degrees uh, between two straight points. So if I go straight, well, between, it doesn't matter if it's a straight point, um, between any set of three points, I try not to exceed 180 degrees on a curve. Um, so with this one, we're kind of right on the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and sink in another one, another curve point. Um, so typically what I would do is I would divide it in half. Um, let's get back to where I can mark up on it, sorry. Uh, I would divide it in half, um, but since this one's a little bit bigger, I think I'm gonna go ahead and divide this one in thirds. So something about like that. Now I'm gonna put an input point here and here, wherever it changes drastically. And then I'm gonna divide that curve in half. And this is how I digitize. Um, you will find what works best for you. Um, this is just what works best for me. But I think it will work well for you at least starting out. All right, so let's uh, move this, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna left click. I'm gonna go about a third of the way into this curve. And the only reason I'm doing thirds instead of halves is because it just barely exceeds 180 degrees. And then here's a really sharp transition. So to create that sharp transition, I'm going to left click to create a straight point. Now that doesn't mean that it straightens this out. It just means that uh, you, you're making an abrupt change and the handles aren't connected. Um, in fact, you can have a handle on one side and not on the other, which is what we'll get here. And then I'm gonna hold Alt to come straight across, left click again. This one I'm gonna divide in half, right click, left click. And I'm done with this one, so I will hit Enter. There we go. Now let's look at this one. Um, this one, I kinda cheated for you. I divided it for you. Um, so I divided it in half and then halves again. So if you need help with it, you can pay attention to the blue dotted lines. Um, this too is where I will print something out and start marking all over my paper um, of where I would divide up curves. I'm gonna left click to start it out. Right, right, right. And I'm gonna left click to end. So you always start with a, a left and end with a left. Hit enter. All right, and now this piece, I'm gonna come across. I'm gonna left click to start. I could come here and then digitize around and come back. If I wanna make sure that they are absolutely level, what I may choose to do is go all the way to the end, hit enter, and then come back in and edit in those shapes. To edit in a shape, you can left click where there's a sharp transition, 
I'm going to right click in the middle to create a curve and I'm going to drag this down and that worked fairly well I have the two sides just about right but that curve does not look right and that's because uh, as I drag it the handles stayed where they were and you can edit these handles as you want um, but I'm too lazy to go in and edit all of these handles if I want it to arc out perfectly as I uh, click and drag on this if I hold control it will arc out perfectly so we've got that done so you could do it digitizing uh, left left right left left and that would work I just went straight across and edited in a, a curve just to make sure that my my stitches were completely level um, up to you how you want to tackle that now here we've got another one where we've got a lot of transitions um, I have divided this uh, into four pieces for each curve um, and left those blue marks for you. But uh, you could choose to do it in less. Uh, you, you could probably do this instead of in, in fourths. You could do it in thirds. Where I have a sharp transition like this, uh, or, or this is less of a sharp transition and more of a kind of straightening out, uh, I will often swap back to a straight point when it comes to where it starts to change. So let's do this piece I'll try in thirds. If it doesn't work for me, you can laugh at me. Oh, so this did not work well for me. Um, you can see on the first chunk how it's it's just not lining up um, and on the second chunk it really is um, that's because I, I missed and I exceeded 180 degrees and so it's kind of uh, moving that line a little bit now uh, if I were to line up a little bit better and again I'm guessing here so hopefully you're better at this than I am uh, here I'm a little better but still on this half it's not working so I'm gonna give up um, because it is it is too big for me to do well so I'm going to just divide it into half and then half again so quarters I'm going to go straight straight and then I'll do this again divide it in quarters just because that's easier for me Hit enter to complete it. If I didn't get one of those perfectly, I can go back in and edit it, or I could have hit backspace and redone it. All right, now for this piece. Um, this piece has a lot of curves, a lot of transitions. And how do we deal with that? Um, same, same way you just divide each curve in half and do it with a right click. So I start with my curve with a left click, start this over. So start with a left click, divide this curve in half, right, left, right, left. And I just continue in that fashion, trying again to use as few points as possible, but because of this, I'm pretty much going to have, you know, a set for each curve. It's a very sharp transition, doesn't matter. Straight point will take care of it. Here I'm going to divide this whole thing in half. I don't have to help this along. Um, I can divide the whole thing in half. Here we go. Here I've got kind of a weird transition here, so I'm going to divide this in half. And here I'm going to left click. Try to divide this in, cur uh, in thirds. That's going to work fairly well. Here I've got kind of a different uh, curve starting. So I'm going to do this with a straight point. And if I want to smooth that out later, I can come back and swap that to a curve point. It will smooth out that line. But to aid this transition, that's what I'm going to do. Divide that in half. Here we've got another transition coming up. So I'm going to left click to change direction. How big is that curve? All right, I can divide that in half. and then left click to end it and then I'm going to hit enter to complete my shape. 
And like I said, if I wanted to smooth this out a little bit, um, I could uh, hold shift and click on it to make it a, a curve point and then just adjust my handle a little bit to kind of smooth that out. There we go. All right, so that's done. And then here we've got a lot of pieces. Last one. Um, and for this one, uh, just to show you how to use another tool, uh, we're going to do that with the vector line tool. This digitizes just like uh, a walk stitch. The only difference is um, it doesn't have any stitches associated with it. Uh, you can change your stroke weight or your width here. Um, you can change your pen color here. Your brush color is not going to matter with a linear element. There is no fill, um, so there's nothing on the inside of it. So let's start here. I'm going to right click. Here's a sharp transition. I'm going to left click. Let's scroll up. You'll notice that I'm zoomed in quite a bit. I tend to do that when I digitize. And if you want to zoom in and out, you'll notice that I'm doing that while I still have a tool selected. I am just holding uh, shift and scrolling on my mouse, and that will scroll into and out from the cursor. I'm going to divide this in thirds. It's getting pretty close to 180. Here's another transition, so I'm just going to left click there, divide this in half, another transition, left click, and I'm going to hold alt to constrain that line angle left click every time because they're very sharp transitions. Here, uh, holding Alt will kind of not allow you to get where you need to be. So I'm going to let go of Alt, left click, left click. Here we go again. Right click to divide. I'm looking for that transition. There we go. Right, right. Um, I'm going to do this in thirds, I think. They're not perfect thirds, but there's three in within 180, so we're pretty good. Uh, here, because I'm starting to tighten that curve, I'm going to left click just to, to make sure I don't mess up this side of it. Right, 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 left for that sharp transition. and left click to end, hit enter, and there it is with my vector line. It is uh, in a different spot, it's in the vector list now, um, but that's how you would use the vector line tool. Um, I have it fairly thick, just so you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, so you've got your walk tool, which is going to generate a line of stitching. You've got your vector line, which will generate no stitching. Um, again, that's a level dependent tool. Uh, and then at the end of that, you have a manual stitch and this you will start with left click if you try to right click and make a curve it's not going to work it's going to put uh, a left in there you can't create a curved stitch and so every time you click it's going to be a, a, a straight point because there there are no curves with a, a manual stitch because there are no needle penetrations between where you sink your stitches so if I zoom in here you can see uh, other than the, the tie that's happening, there are no stitches falling within that form, unlike with a walk where it has uh, needle penetration every so often. So those are your linear, linear tools. Um, your walk, again, great for travel, great for detail. Um, your vector line, I tend to use it uh, not infrequently for creating those hash lines on my artwork uh, just so that I know uh, where I really want to divide something. And uh, your manual stitch, um, you can use it a few different ways. One, um, if you just want that amount of control that you are, you are creating um, where those needle penetrations are, um, that's what that tool is for. Um, occasionally, I will use it when I'm doing some fine detail fur effects where I want, um, again, that control to do long, short, long, and it's all up to me. Um, and then every now and then uh, you can actually use it to jump over a satin stitch and if it's the same color it will hide if you line up your manual stitch with the direction of your satin stitch that you're going over. So um, those are, are kind of what you can use uh, manual stitches for. Um, 
But again, you've got your walk, your uh, vector line, which is level dependent, and uh, your manual stitch as kind of your very linear um, digitizing tools.